A state Senate bill sets the most aggressive targets ever to address climate change. It would require 80% of the electricity in the state to come from renewable sources by the year 2050. The bill is facing an uphill battle against business interests and the State Division of Rate Council, who warn already high energy costs would climb even higher. The bill's sponsor chairs the Energy Committee. Senator Bob Smith joins us from Trenton. Thanks for being here. How does the state get its ratio of renewable energy up 80% by the year 2050? Well, it's not that hard, Mary Alice. The uh, state is one of the major leaders in the installation of solar energy uh, for the United States of America. We're third or fourth on the list. We could be better. We actually, at one point, were number two. But what we've done is, to, in the past years, not the last six and a half years, but before that, we've passed legislation that stimulated the uh, solar industry in our state. We actually passed legislation that also encouraged wind, but we're now waiting five years for the Board of right. Public Utilities. Right, we can't get wind off publish. the ground, right? It, it, we can't get it off the ground. Our Board of Public Utilities is totally useless. Uh, they've been five years telling us that they're going to do rules and regulations. And when uh, the uh, president came into the Judiciary Committee, which I sat, sit on, uh, I said, where are those rules? And he said, well, we've just hired a consultant. So it's, it's kind of shameless that uh, this state with 130 miles of coastline that is uh, vulnerable to uh, climate change, and if you don't believe in that, shame on you, that's uh, so vulnerable and costs billions of dollars to deal with it, among mm -hmm. other things, that we're not doing more in the renewable area, even right, though we're, like I said, third or fourth. Let's talk about money. It always comes down to money. Sure. Detractors of this bill cite the cost as a constraint in putting all these programs into place. How much would your proposal cost the state and taxpayers? And the answer is not much. And the, answer, and then the reason that I can say that with confidence is that over the last 10 to 15 years, the cost of solar has so dramatically decreased that it is almost, almost at the uh, cost point equal to traditional energy sources. And by the way, that's not so easy to do because you have all this new natural gas production in the mm -hmm. United States of America that has dramatically low, lowered carbon fuel costs. But carbon fuels, at the end of the day, are what, what are doing us in on climate change. And we have to get away from those car carbon uh, fuels. And we have to get to renewables if we have any hope of combating this climate change that makes New Jersey so vulnerable to uh, climate oh, attack. What, what so, are the state's current, what's the current energy portfolio? We have over 10,000 solar uh, facilities in the state. Now, a lot of those are rooftop, rooftop solar. But we could be the Saudi Arabia of solar energy. We have literally millions and millions of square feet of warehouse roofs in this state that don't have solar panels on them. We, like I said, we could be generating so much solar electricity, we'd be selling it to other states because it would be in excess. But we have barriers that prevent us from doing that, namely a, a very lackadaisical board of public utilities, but also too, uh, there's some institutional barriers. For example, uh, warehouse owners are afraid to install solar because they have roof warranties. Right, and there's and an the upfront cost as, as well. Right, but the, the, the amortized cost of solar is at a price point where it's extremely advantageous to the owner. They can do what's called net metering, meaning that all the electricity that's generated on site can be okay. used. Right. for their Look, electric needs, and they can sell off-site. This, this bill, virtually the same, was pocket-vetoed by the governor last time around. Any chance of this passing under the current governor? Um, I think there's a chance, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, even though the Koch brothers weigh very heavily on energy policy in uh, the state of New Jersey, well, one of the differences between a pocket veto and a regular veto is that when you do a regular veto, you have to explain why. And I can't wait to see what his explanation is. The economics have gotten so much better, and the vulnerability of New Jersey has gotten so much worse that uh, it literally is a no-brainer for this state okay. and other states to be doing more and more renewable. All right. Thank you, Senator Bob Smith. Thank you, Mary Alice.